so this I, this is just a, a three examples I have that I tossed in for today. So this is a, a letter from May of uh, May first, nineteen oh six, from the guy who basically ran Happy Land Park here in Winnipeg uh, on behalf of uh, his the company that owned it was the American Park Company in New York. Um, so this letter, uh, this is Happy Land uh, the day after the opening uh, day with like, what do they say? It's like 45,000 people came or something. I don't know. Can't read the caption right now. So this is my uh, uh, a little, make it a little clearer what it is. I don't know that it looks, at first I thought this was like a one page letter, um, but it it could be that they use the letterhead on every page because it looks like the first line is continuing something. Um, but basically he's he's got this correspondence going with somebody uh, apparently down in the US uh, trying to get him to come up um, to possibly manage or at least have a significant role with the auditorium, which I suspect might be the dance hall uh, in Happy Land. It's kind of interesting. He threw tossed in that there were about a hundred men and women that were uh, employed by by Happy Land in those days. Um, so he's trying. He's entreating this guy to come up and not to bring a mechanic because he could hire one in Winnipeg. Um, and also, he not not he's not prepared to advance the railroad fare because two of his park boys just arrived from Cleveland and state they bought tickets for $20 settlers tickets uh, now on sale everywhere. Um, and it said we're opening, and I'm not sure I couldn't make out that word, uh, but they've got 14,000 14, square feet service. So it sounds like the dance hall to me. Um, so a couple of things I pulled out of it was, um, that okay, we mentioned the settlers' tickets were very popular back in those days, and basically, get trying Canada is trying to get people heading out west, and the railways, of course, want their business, and so they got discounted rates if they settlers' rates. They pretty much uh, uh, no fancy uh, tickets, but um, it you know gave people a cheaper way to to move. Um, the interesting thing here for me was that this letter mentioned Saturday the 27th and Monday the 29th. Um, otherwise, it doesn't uh, give a date. But I did find out that those there was a Monday the 29th and a Saturday the 27th in the month of May in 1906. So my guess is that this uh, letter was written shortly before uh, it opened for business. Um, this is another one. This is a little bit older. Uh, it's June twenty, June second, eighteen eighty four, and it's uh, written by A. W. Austin, who owned the Winnipeg Street Railway Company. Um, he founded it uh, back in eighteen eighty one. It went in service in eighteen eighty two. His service was a horse drawn carriage or host horse drawn uh, streetcar uh, business. Um, it went on until uh, 1894, at which time, actually, he was doing electric uh, cars, but uh, another company had begun, uh, which was also doing electric cars, and there was they went on for s several years, I think it was close to five years, um, trying to resolve who was going to be doing, who was really going to be do offering the uh, services in Winnipeg and the other company. Uh, and then and they were fighting with the local government and things like that. Anyways, the other company went out, so he he sold out to them in in uh, 1894. And it turns out his father uh, was actually president of the Dominion Bank of Canada, and died a few years later. So he was able to take over as the uh, president of the Dominion Dominion Bank. So those are just a couple of letters that I significant letters. I think it's kind of fun to have these pretty prominent people uh, uh, and have their signatures. Um, this uh, 
Oh, there, this is what, what his letter was all about, which is, it took me a long time to, this guy's handwriting wasn't great. A long time to figure this out. But um, basically, I think the first set of question marks there is uh, an abbreviation for gentleman is G-E-N-T, probably with a superscript N. Thank you. Good one. And in the, in the Edmonds letter, I meant to say, but I have was muted. The first set of question marks in the Edmonds letter, I think, are the two words we do. We do? Yeah. Um, Didn't want to make you go back to it, no, but I, I, I thought I'd to. mention it. It's nice to fill in gaps like that. It's we do. We do not advance railroad fare. Okay. Really? Okay, uh, Paul, I'm going uh, to get your email address and I'm going to start sending you stuff to translate. Well, I wouldn't mind because I'm, I'm trying to get somebody now to, to uh, transcribe or tell me what language a letter is in. I bought a six page letter and I carefully checked the contents to make sure it was complete, but the lighting wasn't so good. And I hadn't realized it wasn't even written in English. I thought it was Polish, but somebody told me yesterday it's some other Slavic language. So now I'm looking for somebody to help me with that. So sure, if you have stuff like that, I wouldn't mind checking. No, I, I mean, I thought I was get, I'm getting pretty good, but I'm not getting like anywhere near your level. So thank you. Oh, it's not that. <laughs> yeah, I'll be coming. Okay. Um, so basically he was writing uh, a guy, uh, the C.W. Levitt himself, um, who was an ore and metal importer, uh, offices based in New York. And... I guess a Rolls, it is Rolls. I should take that question mark out. I, I established it was Rolls. Um, and I, I think those are ref, they, those refer to um, the machinery in a, in a steel mill that pumps out a uh, product. And in this case, he's, he was looking for to buy rails uh, for his company here. And he's he he knows he could. I guess there's a difference between American rails and and British rails. And he was wanting to put in British rails here in Winnipeg, but it was going to cost him a fortune to bring it from across the ocean, as he put it. Um, so he was trying to talk this American uh, producer of rails to modify uh, their equipment to put out. British style rails, and and uh, I guess he was uh, having a he wasn't uh, pleased with what the the uh, what he was getting back from this guy because he sent them a design that they wanted and he received uh, just pictures of what they were already doing and so in here he's trying to make his case um, that he's you know the first order would be. Uh, whoops, sorry, back, um, would be for 50 tons, and uh, subsequently that they may require 150 more, and just sort of saying this this could be a, a moneymaker for you, and that's basically what, it, what the letter is about. So it, this was written, it says 1880, it was... Uh, originally says 1884 and it looks like a five went over it but when I look at it when I look at it closer it looks like it could just be a scribble too so I don't know which year it was okay finish with my two two letters so uh, this piece of ephemera is actually a booklet uh, called the souvenir of Winnipeg which most of them were were called no matter who put them out um it was published by C.J. Campbell, who was a bookseller here in Winnipeg, but it was actually really put out by Atkinson, Atkinson Brothers in Toronto, uh, who you're, you're probably familiar with because they put out a lot of postcards and had some pretty early ones and great ones. And in fact, the some of the graphics in this particular booklet really resemble some of the graphics they used on on some of their postcards. Uh, so this is the what the front of it looked like with this uh, picture of Main Street looking north. That's the city hall sitting up here. Um, it, I'm saying it's 1903 uh, because um, of a note that is on the booklet saying uh, it's for Happy New Year 1904, but it could actually be earlier than 1903. But, uh, 
I'm using that. So there's, they've got some great pictures that uh, don't show up on postcards and have some really interesting views. This one um, is looking south roughly from Portage in Maine. And, um, and this is the uh, Empire Hotel here, still all dirt streets. This is the McIntyre block in its original state before uh, they added on to it and made it a, a big rectangular building. And the, the interesting thing is that I, I believe this is the beginning of the uh, constructing of foundations for uh, the Merchants Bank building. Uh, this is the uh, Dominion Bank. Uh, there's a lot of pictures of it around, but this this one is is definitely uh, different than I've seen before. And this this here is actually a uh, little tobacco product tobacco uh, store that shows up for a while in picture. I don't know when it actually went down. Rob. Yep. Whoop. If you go back one, was that a a Lynn photo? Was it there on the left, bottom left? Oh, steel. Oh, steel and company. Oh. Yeah. They're uh, very prolific and a lot of, actually a lot of Winnipeg's earliest cards came from steel. And, so, and sometimes the logo was still on it and sometimes it wasn't. So this is a, a kind of a neat Main Street shot. This is the, this is looking south again and this is the old post office building on the east side. And there's some kind of a parade going on in down the line of spectators. It couldn't have been a very uh, interesting parade because there aren't people sitting up here on tops of the buildings like they tended to do back in those days. Rob, well, that script up on the top is that was that on the image itself? Because I, I noticed some on the uh, earlier images that you showed also. Yes, they're they're. I mean, they're they're printed on with, with the image, like okay. That, um, that and fun. and again, some of their postcards uh, have that kind of thing, or their early postcards have this same scripting on on them. Mm. Um, so this is the uh, very early courthouses of uh, in Winnipeg. They, I th Andrew, is this the first one? I think it is. Was this built first? Yeah, and then they built the... And then they built this one a few years later. And No, I think maybe it's the other way around. It is the other way around? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll it was kind of awkward. All awkward. I could find was something saying the bigger one was built first. And I I, I, <laughs> I thought, well, what if this one's not very deep and this one is? Um, okay, so that's... And then this is basically on Kennedy Street. So it's really just up the street from where... Uh, the current day courthouses are. Um, this, of course, is the uh, University of Manitoba um, that sits somewhere on the grounds now uh, now uh, known as Memorial Park. Again, this is another steel photo. Now it's this is a, a, almost an identical picture, which or at least perspective was shown in earlier in Gord's presentation. Um, this is the uh, uh, volunteer mon monument that sat on the grounds of right in front of the old courthouse. And and it's, uh, you know, basically looking south. City Hall, you mean? Sorry? City Hall, you mean? City Hall. Oh, sorry. I, did I do a courthouse again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, now it gets a little more interesting. So this is an arch uh, in, on September 26th, 1901, the city was graced with a one day visit from the Duke of, and Duchess of Cornwall and York, who later became King George V and Queen Mary. And they did a cross country tour that year. Literally, they did Winnipeg on the 26th, Regina on the 27th, Calgary on the 28th, <laughs> They did these one day visits to different towns. So Winnipeg built this arch, which is just south of William Avenue on Main Street. And you can see the city hall back here. 
it appears to me that these are probably sheaves of, of wheat um, because that's what we were famous for. And they, you know, for, this is a one day visit and they built this, uh, this archway. No postcards of it. Um, so they also, during that one day, they had a ceremony at the city hall, which they presentation of medals. I can't find, I wasn't, haven't been able to find out who got medals for what. Um, and these steps are actually ascending right from main street itself. And these buildings were all on uh, Market Avenue before uh, the, which were all torn down and Market Avenue, this side of Main Street disappeared when we built our current city hall. And this is the old, old city hall known as the Gingerbread City Hall. Behind it, you can see the tower of uh, the market. And then we go back to the second arch that they built for that visit. And this one, it's interesting, was interesting finding because I couldn't figure out where it was, but this sign actually gave it away. Um, as you can read here, uh, going to the 1902 Henderson's directory, I found out that uh, uh, this was a clothing store in the Euclid Hotel at 684 Main Street, right on the corner of Main and Finesca, which is now Higgins. So that's where that arch is, is standing. Um, and the sign across the arch says, citizens of Winnipeg wish you both Godspeed. Uh, this is the last image that's in there. Um, I was thinking at first that this was a parade that was put on for that royal visit, but since there's no arch here, um, it isn't. So that, that's it. Very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, that's kind of fun. It's kind of fun because I, Again, those none of not too many of those pictures resemble anything I've seen in postcards. No, they're a bit too early, maybe. So what's that? A bit too early. Yeah, that's true. Although they used old, they used old pictures, but it's true too. I never wanted one where you know some important new building wasn't there. Like nobody wanted that. So, right. Rob, could that presentation of medals be for the Boer War? It could be. Like again, I haven't been able to find out, but that that's that's a good guess for sure. Maybe that that'll give me some, some more keywords to use in searching for it. Not that I know anything about it, except that it was I think late eighteen nineties. Yeah, yeah. Well, it makes it makes all kinds of sense that it would be that. Yeah, they would have had to find something for for them to do like that. So right. people would already have been coming back from the Boer War. So I guess there would be some that deserved medals. I got a question. Is anybody else in the group collecting old cabinet photographs from the uh, local photographers around Manitoba? I have a bunch of cabinet photos. There's the guy, Mr. Cabinet Card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last summer I was going through Saskatchewan and I stopped at a roadside antique store and picked up a box of old photographs. And there's about 45 from Winnipeg and Manitoba from the late 1800s. So. I'd be interested in knowing what uh, photographers are, were, were represented among the collection. Yeah, I got some. There's two from Penrose. There's the American Art Gallery, uh, Jones and the CPR Gallery, Mitchell, John Ross, Steele, Bonetto, John Best. It's, quite, it's a nice, diverse collection. Yeah, Bonetto and Penrose are really early, especially Penrose. Penrose would be dating from the 1870s. Yeah. So how, how many do you, like, you, you specific uh, for Winnipeg Gord or all of Manitoba or? Uh, well, it, it, usually most of it is from the major cities like Winnipeg, Brandon, some from Minnedosa, a uh, few from Killarney. Um, but usually it says Man Winnipeg and Brandon are the big ones. Okay. No, very are, they mostly, are they mostly photos of people or are there other things too? No, it's just, just uh, of people. Portraits. Yeah. 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 I think that was, that was the bread and butter for a lot of these guys. I think was taking portraits of people. Oh, well, it's kind yeah. of becoming my secondary uh, collection, I guess. <laughs> when the, when yeah, it's a good one. I'm trying to get uh, the, you know, the real photos of 
people that were done by studios that didn't publish uh, real photo postcards as such, but you know, they took a lot of pictures of individuals uh, that were in the real photo form. So, and often they would blind stamp, uh, you know, emboss their names on them or something or have it on the back. So I'm trying to get kind of one example of as many of those probably Rob does too, as I can, because they're not really things that you really want to buy that much. Uh, Inherently, right. because it's a picture of somebody you usually don't even know who they are, but it's nice to get all that. There's so many photography studios that <laughs> you just keep hearing of more and more and more, as you know, from your huge list. Yeah, exactly. Um, I should mention, like, Gord um, on the Manitoba Historical Society website has a pretty comprehensive list of Manitoba photographers through the years. Um, some of them he's, he's been able to put together little profiles on, but um, anybody who runs into um, something on cabinet cards it doesn't or postcards or whatever, um, it, check out his list and just make sure the photographer's there. And if not, get a hold of Gordon and let him know. He has dates as well. So if you have something that's not in the date range that he has, I'm sure he'd like to, to hear about mm -hmm. that too. Absolutely. For sure. Uh, Gord, Alan, Alan McLaughlin might have some information about uh, uh, Murray McKenzie because Murray took a lot of his photographs in the PAW and probably mm -hmm. around the 60s. Yeah, you see, any of those photographers, I mean, any any of them any time, I'm, I'm not just interested in the very early ones, ones through the 40s, 50s, 60s. Uh, heck, I just heard from somebody not long ago, they had somebody who was a photographer in the 80s. So, uh, you know, it's not exclusive. It's really meant to represent all of photography in Manitoba, no matter when it happened. Yeah, well, Murray McKenzie was uh, probably one of the very few indigenous photographers. And I think mm -hmm. he trained trained in Northern Saskatchewan at Saskatoon. Then he went to the Paw and Flin Flon and Thompson. And he used to, uh, he used to combine with uh, Bob Lowry, but he used to write for mm -hmm. the Winnipeg Free Press. And they would go around the north interviewing people. And uh, Bob wrote a book called The uh, Unbeatable Breed. Yeah, we, we, we have a, a short biography of Murray McKenzie in the Memorable Manitobans collection on the MHS website. Uh, Ralph McLean from the PAW had, had given us the information for it. Okay. Al McLaughlin will probably know a lot more about Murray if he's taking, if he's finding images of uh, uh, postcards out of the PAW. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that's. I, I actually had a couple of his. Took me a while to figure out who he was. <laughs> well, I want to thank uh, all of our uh, visitors today. Um, if you ever have a hankering to drop in, it's the second second Sunday of every month, mm -hmm. and uh, we can put you on the emailing list and let you know what's happening. 